diagram shows a girl standing on a diving board. Calculate the force on the diving board from the support, which is over here. The support is 1.25 meters from point A, which is over here. Okay, so firstly, we know that the support is going to exert a force on the diving board at that point there, but we don't have to guess what direction that force is. If we take moments about point A, so imagine you're down here, okay, if we take moments about that, we know that the weight of the board and the weight of the girl is going to spin it clockwise. So there must be an anti-clockwise moment from the support there. So for there to be an anti-clockwise moment, that force at so the support must be upwards. Okay, now if we want to figure out what the force at point A, which way that's going to point. So we'll take moments about um, the support now. So if we take moments about the support, we ignore the force at the support. Okay, so imagine you're standing at the support over here. Okay, um, the, the weight of the girl is still spinning it clock, the board clockwise and the weight of, so the weight of the diving board. So that point A, this must spin it anti-clockwise like so. So if it's to spin it anti-clockwise, the force at point A must be downwards. Okay, to calculate FS, we should take moments. Okay, so because we don't know FA, we'll take moments about A. Okay, so we'll take moments about A and we add up this clockwise moments. So if we're taking moments about A, we can ignore the force at A. So imagine you're standing at force at point A. Obviously, this is going to spin it clockwise. This is going to spin it clockwise. And this is going to spin anti-clockwise. So let's add up those moments. So the force, the moment from the diving board's uh, weight and the moment from the girl, add that up together, you get 3,800 newton meters. And then add anti-clockwise moment, which is from the force from the support um, times the distance to the support, which is 1.25. And then we solve that equation with an equal and we get force on the support 3040. Okay, to find the force at point A, don't need to take moments, we can just do a translational equation, which means that the resultant force is equal to zero. So that all the downward forces added together must equal the upward force. We just work out, worked out the upward force, it's 3040 newtons. So I'm going to write an equation for this. So the downward force, these two are 1,400 together. So add that with FA, we'll get uh, 3,040. And solving that, we get... Okay, we've got the same question here, except that now the girl is moving towards the right. How is force A and force FS going to change when that happens? Now, we know that as she moved towards the right, then, I mean, the weight of the diving board is going to stay constant. So that's not going to change, and its position isn't going to change. However, these two forces, FA and FS, will change at the same time. So to figure out what's going on, we should take tackle one force at a time. So I'm going to figure out how FS changes first. So to do that, I'm going to take moments about FA, point A. By taking moments about point A, I, think I can ignore how FA changes. Okay, I'm going to ignore that now. So as the girl moves towards the right, her weight isn't changing, but her distance is increasing. So the clockwise moments gets bigger. Okay, so if the clockwise moment gets bigger, but obviously the, the, the clockwise moment from the diving board isn't getting any smaller or anything, it's just constant, that must mean that we need to get increased anti-clockwise moment in order to balance the increasing clockwise moment. The only thing that can provide anti-clockwise moment right now is the force from the support. So the support has to push with a bigger FS. So FS here is going to increase. Okay, so it's explained here. By taking moments about point A, we know that the clockwise moment from the girl is going to increase. So the anti-clockwise moment must increase to balance and keep in rotational equilibrium. So that means the only way for the anti-clockwise moment to increase is for Fs to increase. Okay. And now we're going to figure out how Fa changes, force A changes. Now we know that um, these two forces are constant, but we just said the force Fs is going to get bigger. So the upward force is getting bigger. Okay. So that must mean that the downward force needs to get bigger. And so Fa must also get larger. Okay, so the resultant force equals zero. The upward force has increased, which is said from the first part there. So that means the downward force needs to increase, so Fa increases. Alternatively, if I didn't want to use the translation equilibrium explanation, I could have taken moments about the support. So I can ignore Fs. As the girl moves towards the right, she's getting further from the, uh, from the support. So her clockwise moment is increasing about the support. Okay, so as the clockwise moment increases, something needs to increase the anti-clockwise moment. So FA needs to get bigger because the distance isn't changing. The one is still 1.5, the distance here. 
So it needs to get the force itself needs to get larger to create a larger anti-clockwise moment. So here's the explanation for that. You can say by taking moments about the support, the distance of the girl is increasing, so her clockwise moment is increasing. The anti-clockwise moment must increase to keep it in rotational equilibrium, and the only for that way for that to happen is force A to increase. Okay, we've got a similar question here. We've got a painter moving towards the left, and that's going to have an effect on force A and force B. Okay, and here we are asked to explain how these forces change. So I want to look at how to get the marks on these explanation questions. Okay, so if I want to study how force B changes first, I need to ignore force A. So the only way to ignore force A is to take moments about A, and that's very important. That's the most important that most people forget is to be clear where you're taking moments about. I'm taking moments about A. So what effect does that have as he moves uh, towards the left here? So because his dis the painter's distance from the point A is decreasing, his clockwise moment decreases. Okay? That means the anti-clockwise moment must also decrease. right? Otherwise, uh, it won't be in rotational equilibrium, so they won't balance. So for the anti-clockwise moment to decrease, well, the distance from A to B is fixed, so that can't decrease. So that must mean this force here gets smaller. This force is going to get smaller. Okay, so now I can figure out how force A changes. Because force A and force B are adding together to balance the weight of the person, if force B is getting smaller, force A needs to get bigger. So that the upward and downward force are still balanced. There's another way to explain it. If I didn't want to use the resultant force idea here, and I want to figure out how force A changes, I need to take moments about force B. Okay, so I'm going to take moments about B now. If I take moments about B, that means I can ignore the force at B. So I'm being very clear where I'm taking moments about. I'm taking moments about B there. Okay, so as he moves further from B, his weight isn't changing, it's still the same. So he's getting further away. So that means the, in this case, he's having an anti-clockwise moment. His anti-clockwise moment is increasing. Okay, so that must mean the clockwise moment must increase. Right? Otherwise, it won't balance. It's the only way for the clockwise moment to increase because the distance between A and B is fixed. Force at A must get bigger.